This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Glad to be in the house of God this evening. Yes. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us unto yourself, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of adoption in our heart, Father. Lord, what a great privilege to call you Father. Without any guilt, without any fear, without any shame, without any condemnation. All because of Jesus. And so, Father, Lord, we have gathered unto you and our hearts are open, Lord, to receive your word, Father. Lord, we ask, Lord, that your spirit will walk in every heart, Lord, in every mind, Lord, in every soul this evening by your word, Father. And let our life not remain the same. Thank you, Father. Sweet Holy Spirit, our great teacher, we just embrace you and we'll embrace your ministry. We'll open ourselves to you and we'll say, walk uh, freely, flow freely in our midst. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, there's someone here, uh, you, you, you feel like uh, you are on a cliff, you know, about to fall. That, that's the kind of uh, the perception, that's the kind of a feeling uh, that you have. That's the lies that the devil is telling you. And the Lord is asking me to tell you, you are not falling off any cliff. Amen. Because he that watches over you neither sleep nor slumber. Amen. Don't be afraid, you are not falling off the cliff. That's what the Lord is saying to you. The Lord holds you, said, I will hold your right hand. That's what the Lord says to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, this evening, uh, because I, I still want us to pray, uh, what I'll be doing is that uh, I'll break this teaching into two, all right? So this is just going to be the part one, and we'll see how far we could go, and then we'll uh, continue next week as the Lord help us. Let God's Spirit fill you, all right? That's, that's uh, the teaching we're going to uh, consider and this is very important. I want you to open your heart. Uh, follow me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Are you ready tonight? Ephesians chapter 5. I read easy to read uh, version. Here's the English Bible. Uh, 15 to 21. Let God's spirit fill you. Or rather, be filled with the spirit of God. Or get filled with the Holy Spirit. Whichever one you are comfortable with. Ephesians 5, 12, 21. This is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. Paul was... Uh, in the prison in Rome, all right, and then he, uh, he, he began to write letters that we call epistles to uh, places that he has been, believer that he has met before, churches that he has planted during his missionary journey. So, Ephesians is one of the letters that he wrote uh, from the prison in Rome. And so, Paul uh, in the book of Ephesians was uh, telling the believer the blessings of adoption, the blessings uh, that they have in Christ. And then from chapter 4, he began to give them what we call instructions, admonition. In other words, he began to tell them how they ought to live or uh, what is expected of them as believers, as Christians. All right? So let's look at this instruction from verse 15. Easy, English Bible. Ephesians 5 uh, from verse 15. So you must be very careful how you live. So this is Paul writing, all right, uh, to Christians like us. And this letter is for us today. Live like people who understand what is right and good. Do not live like people who do not understand anything. Verse 16, these are bad times. So use every moment well. Let me tell somebody, say use every moment well. <laughs> do not be fools, but instead understand what the Lord wants. Verse 18, this is what we're going to focus on this evening. Do not drink too much wine. Because that will cause bad things. It will stop you ruling yourself properly. But instead, let what? God's Spirit fill you. I want you to say to someone, say, let God's Spirit fill you. Yes. Now, that's Paul's instruction to Christians, to the church at Ephesus. And this is also for our 19, 20, 21. Speak to each other with all kinds of spiritual songs. 
Sing and make music to the Lord from inside yourself. Thank God, the Father, always for everything. By our Lord Jesus Christ's name. Be servant to each other because Christ is your master. Nick King James put verse 18 this way. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. The same thing. Our gospel translation says, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to wine living. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. All man, Christian, a standard Bible. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless action. But be filled with the Spirit. Amplify. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. Now pay attention to this. Now the first recipient of this letter, all right, they understood exactly what Paul was saying in verse 18. When Paul said, do not be filled with wine. That leads to white living, to reckless action. But rather, let the Spirit fill you or be filled or get filled with the Spirit. Do you know why? Because in those days, uh, in Ephesus, there is this uh, festival that they celebrate. Uh, they call it the festival of the gods of wine. The gods of wine is the Bacchus. All right. So at a particular time uh, in the year, uh, they will celebrate the god of wine. And during that time, it is, it is normal for you to get drunk, alright? And when people go drunk, you know what they do? They, 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 they run all over the street with wild, uh, songs, cries, and action, a lot of reckless actions and, and wild behavior. Now, so this was what Paul had in mind when he was telling us, hey, guy, you know, during uh, the time of celebration of Bacchus, the god of wine in Ephesus, you know how people just go crazy and run all over the street. Uh, one of the Bible uh, commentators say, during that time, it's so difficult to find one sober man in the street of Ephesus. It is that bad. And so when Paul was telling them, do not be drunk with wine, now they knew exactly what Paul was talking about. Rather, Paul said, be war, be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want us to really look at this instruction, this command that Paul, by the Spirit of the Lord, gave to uh, the church at Ephesus, which is also for all. For this instruction is for us today. Now listen to this, it's very important. It is absolutely impossible to live the Christian life without the Spirit of God. Are you with me? Now, it is impossible. If you are going to live a supernatural life, if your life is going to be a completely different, you know, uh, in comparison with uh, that of the unbeliever, what makes that difference is the Spirit of God. All right? Okay, now, and that's exactly what Paul had in mind. So, what we want to look at uh, is, what does it mean to let God's Spirit fill you? When Paul said, let God's Spirit fill you, or be filled with the Spirit, what, what did Paul have in mind? Alright, so we're going to look at that phrase. Uh, what was Paul not saying, and what was Paul saying to us by saying, be filled with the Spirit, or let God's Spirit fill you? And then we're going to ask ourselves a question. Why should you be filled with the Spirit? Why should a Christian uh, seek to, to be filled or to let uh, the Spirit of God fill them? And then we're going to look at to let God's Spirit fill you, alright? Uh, I know uh, time will not permit us to answer all these questions, but we're going to see how far we could go. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what does it mean to let God's Spirit fill you? Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but rather be what? Be filled with the Spirit. Or rather, let God's Spirit fill you. Now, three things I wanted to first of all note that Paul was not saying. It is very important. Number one, Paul was not telling them to seek to get the Holy Spirit. That's very important. Paul was not telling the believers at Ephesus that they don't have the Spirit and that they should seek to have the Spirit. Because if that is what Paul meant, that will negate all the epistles that he had written, alright? That will negate the New Testament teaching. Because Paul was writing to believers like us. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? And there's no way you can be a believer without the Spirit of God. Are you with me? Now, because Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, not, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, is none of his. Alright? So you cannot claim to be a child of God, belong to Christ without the Spirit of Christ. Are you listening to what I'm talking So if you're a believer, you have the Spirit of Christ. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Romans 8, when you look at 15, 16, 
the Bible says you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So what do we receive? The spirit of adoption. That is the Holy Spirit by whom we cry out what? Have the Father. The Spirit that is the Holy Spirit himself. Be a witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So you see Paul was not saying go get the Holy Spirit. He was writing to people who had the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Are you following me tonight? So he was writing to people who are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in them. If you are born again, if you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, your body is what? The temple of God and what dwells in you? The spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that what? The spirit of God dwells in you. So we are going to look at what, what does Paul mean by that? Paul was writing to people who are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelling there. And yet Paul was commanding them to be filled with the spirit. Are you following me? Alright. They had the spirit, but yet he was telling them be what? Be filled with the spirit. What does Paul have in mind? You see, in the early chapter, uh, uh, chapter 4 of Ephesians, Paul specifically told them. I wanted to see Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. He, he told the, 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 the church at Ephesus of the believer, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. All right? I, I just wanted to see what Paul was not saying. Paul was not saying, go get the Holy Spirit. Do you know why? Because he, he told them earlier that they were already sealed with the Holy Spirit. Do you know what it means to be sealed? Amplify, explain, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 30. Do not offend or vex or sudden by whom you are sealed, mark, branded as God's own, secure for the day of redemption, or final deliverance through Christ from evil and the consequences of sin. So if you are a child of God, you are sealed with the Spirit, marked by the Holy Spirit, branded as God's own, secure by the Holy Spirit. You know what that means? Your, your spirit, man, your born again spirit, your reborn spirit, is enveloped with the Holy Spirit. So if I have the Holy Spirit, if I'm already marked with the Holy Spirit, branded as God's own, secure by the Holy Spirit, then what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? That's what we are going to uh, consider tonight. So Paul was not telling them to go get the Holy Spirit or to seek to have the Holy Spirit because they have the Holy Spirit already. But yet Paul was telling them, be filled with the Spirit. So that means being filled with the Spirit is not the same thing as having the Holy Spirit. Do, do, do you get the logic? Are you following? I need your response. Are you following me? All right. Number two, what was Paul not saying by the, the, the phrase... Let the Spirit fill you or be filled with the Spirit. Paul was not saying to them that they should seek for more of the Holy Spirit. Or rather, to, to seek to sip in the Holy Spirit little by little like wine. Are you listening to me, alright? For somebody to get uh, drunk with wine, he had to take it little by little. Is that right? Okay. But even though Paul drew a, a comparison, analogy between uh, being drunk with wine and being filled with the Spirit. We know it's not the same thing, alright? Because Paul was not telling them to seek for more of the Holy Spirit. Do you know why? Because it is the full Holy Spirit that came into you the day you say yes to Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Are you with me? Your body is the temple of God and God didn't step into you just with his right leg and say, I, I will come back later. No, God came to dwell in us as a full being. Are, are you with me? That's why the Bible says we are complete in Christ. Are, are you paying attention? So, uh, being filled with faith cannot mean uh, getting more of the Holy Spirit. Do you know why? Because you've got all the Holy Spirit that there is at salvation. Are, are you with me? Are you following me? All right. So we are trying to eliminate what Paul was not saying. All right. So Paul was not saying, go get the Holy Spirit. Paul was not saying, seek for more of the Holy Spirit. Paul was not saying, take in the Holy Spirit little by little. Because God comes in once into our life. And he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you again. Jesus said, the helper will come, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, and he will abide with you all forever. Perpetually, continually. So you have the Holy Spirit in full. Are you with me? Are you paying attention? So that's not what it means to be filled with the Spirit. All right. Now listen to this. What Paul was not saying. Paul was also not saying to them that it's entirely up to God for me to be filled with the Spirit. If Paul said be filled with the Spirit, it is not a prayer point. Are you with me? Come on, talk to me. It's not a prayer request. It's a command. It's an instruction. 
let the spirit fill you. Get filled with the spirit. Do you know what that is talking about? It means there is a role for me to play. So it is not just asking God, God fill me with the spirit, and then I wait passively to be filled with the spirit. No, that's not what Paul meant. Because he says, let the spirit. In other words, allow it. Are you with me? As much as the Holy Spirit desire to fill up, most of the time we resist. Are you paying attention? We don't let him fill us. So that is why Paul said, let the Holy Spirit fill you. Or be filled with the Spirit. So Paul was not telling them, it is entirely up to God. So it is not entirely up to God for me to be filled with the Spirit, all right? When I became born again, God came to dwell in me by His Spirit. But if I'm going to be filled with the Spirit, then I need to be actively involved. Are you paying attention? There is a role, there is a part for me to play. So what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? So if being filled with the Spirit is not seeking to have the Holy Spirit, or seeking to have more of the Holy Spirit, or rather waiting passively for God to fill us with the Spirit. So what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? All right. So let's look at what Paul really meant by that. Number one. Now, Paul was simply telling us that it is not just enough to have the Holy Spirit. You must let the Holy Spirit have you. So when he said, be filled with the Spirit, Paul is writing to you. Paul knows that we have the Holy Spirit. Paul is saying, you've got the Holy Spirit. But as the Holy Spirit got you, you have the Holy Spirit. But as the Holy Spirit have you. So what Paul was telling them is that let the Holy Spirit have you fully. Now, you see, at New Bath, at Regeneration, the Holy Spirit came to dwell in our heart. So he got our heart, our new born again spirit. Are you with me? But not our soul, not our body. Are you with me? Are you paying attention? All right. Because it is our spirit that has experienced the full salvation. Our body and our souls are yet to be regenerated, to be born again. Are you with me? So the Holy Spirit uh, does not have full control over our soul. That's why you could think something that uh, you, you, you have to catch yourself. You have to say, oh, why am I thinking that at all? All right? It, it shows to you that the Holy Spirit has not really got your mind. It doesn't have full control of your thoughts or your thinking process. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So when Paul said, be filled with the Spirit, that is what Paul has in mind. So Paul was saying, number two, let the Spirit's influence increase in your life. Are you with me? The Spirit has full influence over my born again spirit. Are you paying attention? But you see, he doesn't have his influence. It is not, uh, 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 as not so much, uh, totally, completely overwhelm my spirit, uh, my soul, and my body. So when Paul said, be filled with the Spirit, what Paul had in mind is, let the influence of the Spirit increase. Let the control of the Spirit increase, all right? Don't let it just stay in your spirit. Don't let it just stay in your heart. Let it go to your mind, your will, your emotions, your body. That's what he's talking about. So being filled with the Spirit speaks of the Spirit influence, dominion and control, increasing more and more, in our lives, all right? Now, so what Paul was saying, let the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to influence, to control, to dominate, to govern your life completely. To govern your thinking, your will, your, your, your choices, your decision, your desire. That's what Paul is talking about. And that's what it means to be filled with faith. Now, pay attention to this. Now, having the Holy Spirit is a one-time experience. Are you with me? All right, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Then He comes into our life. He said, "I will not leave you off, and I will come to you." All right, and then He came to dwell in us, to suck with us, to abide with us. That is a one-time experience. And He said, "I will be with you forever." The Holy Spirit will be with you forever. But you see, being filled with the Spirit is not a one-time experience. It's a progressive experience. It's a continuous experience. Are you paying attention to what I'm talking about? Now, it's a continuous experience of in. Increase in the spirit's influence. It is a continuous experience of yielding more and more to the Holy Spirit. 
So there's no time that you say, well, I don't need to be filled with the Spirit again. That's why you say we're going to go through the scripture. You see in the heart of Apostle, the disciples were said to be filled uh, not one time, not two times, not three times. Are you listening to me? They were filled with the Spirit. They got the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. But after that, uh, at different times, at different places, they were said to be what? Be filled with the Spirit again. That tells you it is not one time event. Are you with me? It is something continual. Do you know why? Because he's speaking of the spirit growing in influence in my life. He's speaking of the spirits are, are controlling me more and more. He speaks of me bringing my life, my thoughts, my thinking, my will, my desires under the influence and the control and the power of the Holy Spirit more and more. And none of us ever do it perfectly. Are, are you listening to what I'm talking about? Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what it means to be filled with the Spirit. So Paul was saying to them, don't just uh, uh, be pleased with having the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, but rather yield more to the Spirit power, influence and control. You see, most of the time, what we pray for is more of the Spirit. Are you paying attention? But that's a wrong prayer, all right? Because with God... A full holy, there is no half holy spirit. Are you with me? All right. There is no now. When, when God, when our body is the temple of God and the spirit of God dwell in us, it is not that it is uh, one third or one part. No, it is God in His in His being. It, it is the spirit of God that comes to. The, it is the spirit of Christ. It's not divided. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So we don't need to ask for more of the Holy Spirit. Do you know what we need to give more of ourselves to the Holy Spirit? That is what it means to be filled with the Spirit. Giving more of myself to the Spirit. More of my will. More of my, of, of my mind, of my thinking. More of my desires. More of my choices. And yielding them to God. More of my emotions. And I'm yielding it to the Spirit more and more. As we look at the scripture, you're going to understand it. But that is exactly what it means to be filled with. So it is not passively waiting. Now pay attention to this. Now, being filled with the Spirit is not you passively waiting for the Spirit to just hijack your life, all right? Many a time we think that, oh, uh, the Holy Spirit will just suddenly come and then just uh, uh, usurp our life, take over our life like that. No, that's not what it means to be filled with the Spirit. It is you actively, consciously, deliberately yielding more and more to the Spirit. Do you understand what? The Spirit already dwells in us. Are you with me? It dwells in me in His fullness, in His power. But I'm not experiencing, I'm not manifesting His power as I should because I'm not yielded to Him as I should. Do you get it? So being filled with the Spirit is me yielding more and more. So I don't need more of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs more of me. Alright? And the more of me I give to Him, the more of the Spirit manifestation is seen. The more people around me get blessed by the power and the grace and the gift of the spirit that is what we need so when paul said let god's spirit fill you paul is saying let god's spirit have more of you don't let him just dwell in your heart and you box him to your heart and he doesn't have say over your life he doesn't have say over what you think he doesn't have say over decisions you make he doesn't have say over your feeling no that's not how you live a, a, a triumphant victorious overcoming Christian life the spirit must have you more and more and more it must be a continuous experience for you it must be a continuous surrendering to the spirit of God that is what it means to be filled with the spirit in other uh, epistles of Paul, we, we, we find out that uh, Paul used different expressions uh, to, to, to convey the same thing. Like uh, in, in the book of Galatians, you see Paul, rather than say, let the Spirit of God fill you up with faith, Paul will say, walk in the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. It's the same thing that Paul is saying. I want you to see Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. So it is important to understand that what Paul is saying by being filled with the Spirit is simply to let the Spirit grow. Let the influence of the Spirit increase in our life. Let it go beyond our heart. Let it go to your soul, to your mind, to your will, to your emotions, to your body. Let the Spirit dominate you. Let the, the, the Spirit flood you. Flood your whole being, your entire being with His power, with His grace, with His gift. Hallelujah. Uh, look at Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit. It's the same thing. And you shall not fulfill the laws of the flesh. Look at Galatians 5.25. Uh, I read good news translation. 
The Spirit has given us life, alright? Now we got life by the Spirit because it is the Spirit that quickens us. He must also control our life. That's what it means to be filled with the Spirit. The Spirit doing what? Controlling our lives. Galatians 5.25, way more new translation. If we are living by the Spirit power, let our conduct also be governed by the Spirit power. That is what it means to be filled with the Spirit. So let your conduct, your action be what? Be governed by the power of the Spirit. That's what Paul had in mind. I want to read that Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Walk in the Spirit to you. I want to read in a few Bible rendition. Now, it's important for all to understand it. If that is all we could do tonight, I think that is good. Being filled with the Spirit. Alright, so the Bible says, walk in the Spirit. Verse 16, Galatians 5, 16, and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. The reason why many of us gratify the desires of the flesh, and it's as if our flesh is stronger, more powerful, and the flesh is always hindering us, uh, stopping us from fasting, from praying, from studying the Word of God, from evangelizing, from giving, from doing all those things that we really love to do. Do you know why? It's because we are not walking in the Spirit. We are not yielding more and more to the Spirit. We are not letting the Spirit govern and control our life. Paul says, if you let the Spirit take hold of you, there's no way you'll be able to fulfill the loss of the flesh. You will know. So if I'm fulfilling the loss of the always uh, giving in to the desire, the winds and the caprices of my flesh, of my depraved, uh, 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 the unregenerate part of me, it is an indication that the Spirit is not having more of me. Do you understand? He only has my heart. He doesn't have my, my soul. He doesn't have my will. He doesn't have my mind. He doesn't have my emotion. He doesn't have my body. To walk in Greek, in that verse is peripateo. It means to comport, to live, to conduct, to behave yourself. Now, look at it in Good News uh, uh, Bible. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Uh, we're looking at let God's spirit fill you. What I say is this. Let the spirit direct your lives. And you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. So walking in the Spirit, or rather being filled with the Spirit, is to do what? Well, to let the Spirit direct our lives. New Living Translation, Galatians 5.16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit do what? Well, guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. So what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? It is to do what? Well, to let the Holy Spirit guide my life. Easy to read version. Galatians 5 16. So I tell you, live the way the Spirit leads you. Then you will not do the evil things your sinful self wants. So being filled with the Spirit is to what? Let the Spirit lead me. I live the way the Spirit leads me. That is a man, that is a woman that is filled with the Spirit. Not just a woman jumping up and down in the church. Are you with me? It is a person that allows the spirit to lead them. That's what it means to be filled. You let the spirit have control over your decision, over your choices. You don't just say, this is what I want and that is it. Nobody talks to me, but I know you find out what the spirit wants. And what the spirit wants is expressly stated in the word of God. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? I love the way... I. International Children Bible put it. It says, so I tell you, live by what? Following the Spirit. Let me tell someone, say, live by following the Spirit. Not by following popular opinion, all right? Not by following the poll, not by following the news, not by following uh, what your uh, uh, best friend says, all right? It is by following what? What the Spirit says, what the Spirit wants. Message Bible says, my counsel is this, live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. That's what it means to be filled with the Spirit. You let the Spirit animate you. The Spirit quicken you, inspire you, motivate you to do whatever you want to do for God. Two more rendition, amplify. Galatians 5.16, but I say, walk habitually. Habitually means make it a practice. Let it be your second nature, your habit. Habitually in the Holy Spirit, seeking Him. And be responsive to what? So His guidance. That's what it means to be filled with the Spirit. I am seeking the Spirit and I'm being responsive to whatever the Spirit says, to wherever the Spirit leads. Amplified Classic Edition. I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. So from all this rendition that I've read to you, now, walking in the Spirit or being filled with the Spirit or letting the Spirit uh, fill me implies letting the Holy Spirit direct and guide me, living the way the Holy Spirit lead me, living by following the Holy Spirit, living freely motivated 
energized by God's spirit, walking habitually in the Holy Spirit, that is seeking him and responding promptly uh, to his guidance. And it also means to be controlled by the spirit. All right. Now let's look at this a uh, few minutes. Uh, why should you let that happen? Why should I just say, you know what, Holy Spirit, I just want you now to take control. Take control of my, my thinking. Take control of my thought, my mind, my will I yield to you. My emotions I bring under your control. Why should I allow that? Why should I not just be satisfied with I've got the Spirit? Why will I allow the Spirit to get the whole of me? Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Why should that? Uh, I have three major reasons here. Number one, that is your only immunity or resistance to walking in the flesh. This is important. We read that before. Walk in the spirit. Galatians 5, 16, 17. You shall not fulfill the laws of the flesh. For the flesh laws against the spirit. The spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now look at 19. Pay attention. Now all the works of the flesh are evident. All right. Activities of the flesh. When someone yields to the flesh, what do we see? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalry, and the like of that. All right. So you see, if all these things are evident in our life, if we are struggling with this, it's telling us that we are not working in the spirit. We are not letting the spirit control us. Because the only way you are not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. Pay attention to this. If I'm not going to come under the control and the influence of the flesh. When we talk of the flesh now, we are talking of our mind that is yet to be renewed completely. We are talking of our body that has not totally experienced full salvation, full redemption, all right? Until when Christ comes, that is when our body is going to experience full redemption. The Bible says we're going to have a body like that of Christ. Is that right? Okay. But now we don't have that body, all right? Now, so we have the body of this, the Bible call it the divine body, the body of this uh, low nature, the body from dust. So now, most of the time, what my mind wants, all right, don't forget my mind is not born again. Are you with me? My spirit was what I uh, experienced regeneration, salvation, not my soul, not my mind, not my emotions, not my body. So, now, according to the inward man, just as Paul says uh, in the book of uh, Romans 7.22, our inward man, that is the reborn spirit in us, our new heart, delights in the law of God. Paul says, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But you see, that is not all because you are not just a spirit. Are you with me? You have your soul. You live in a body. Now, so two thought of me is not yet completely saved. Are, are you with me? My soul is there. So most of the time, my soul crave for, desire, want something that is totally contrary to what the spirit wants. Are you paying attention? All right. Now, so how do I how do I deal with that? How will I always do what I delight in? What what the Spirit wants? What the Word of God say? How will I always follow the teachings of Christ and obey what the Lord has said in His Word? It is simply by yielding to the Spirit, because there is no middle ground. Is either you yield to the Spirit or you yield to the flesh? Is either you are spiritually minded or you are carnally minded? Is either you are driven by the Spirit or you are driven by the flesh? Do you understand what I'm talking about? There is no middle ground, all right? And Paul is saying to all, that is why you need to let the Spirit gain more influence in your life. That is why you need to consciously, actively, consistently, continually bring your whole being under the control of the Spirit. Because if you don't do that, all right, the flesh is just going to rule you. You yourself will be surprised at what the flesh will push you to do. You, you look at some Christian. You wonder, how can they be living their life like this? They have the Spirit of God. They've been born again for a year. Do you know why? Because they refuse to let the Spirit take control of their life. And so the flesh takes control of them. And the flesh will drive you further than you ever wanted to go. Do you understand? The flesh will make you do worse things than what you have ever imagined that you could do in your life. And Paul warned us in Romans 8, 6 and 7, that if you allow the flesh to rule you, to control you, the result will be death. For to be carnally minded is what? Is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you see, 
Now, and death is not just of uh, just uh, your spirit departing from your body. That's not what it talks about. It talks about miseries of sin. When you check it in Greek, in Greek, that's what it means by death. It means all those things that the unbeliever experience outside Christ. All right. So, if I have the spirit of God, but yes. It is the flesh that is ruling me, controlling me, because I do not allow the spirit to control my soul, uh, to, to dominate and to rule and to govern my desire. Paul says, my experience will be like that of those who don't even have the spirit at all. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? So having the spirit is not enough. Do you get? That's why Paul was writing to those who already got the spirit. Let the spirit fill you. Let the spirit increase in influence. Yield more to the spirit. Let the spirit have the whole of you. Bring your desires under the control of the spirit. Bring your mind under the control of the spirit. Bring your body under the control of the spirit. Because if you don't and you let your body, you let your carnal mind rule you, Paul says you will end up having death. Romans 8, 12 and 13. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. Now, pay attention to this. The unbelievers are in the flesh. Are you paying attention? Do you know why? Because they don't have the spirit. They are just born of flesh. They don't have the spirit of God. They are dead in their sin. Christians are not in the flesh. Paul wrote to us earlier, wrote to us earlier that we are in the spirit. For if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, it's not of his. But you see, there's a difference between living in the flesh and living according to the flesh. Do you, do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Unbelievers, that is just their lifestyle. They, they don't have the choice, the option of living in the spirit or living by the spirit. But believers have that option. I can choose to live According to the flesh, in other words, just letting my flesh just rule me and control me. I just do whatever I want. Whatever my flesh crave for, I just, I just give it to, to it. Do you understand? Now, that is living according to the flesh. Even though I'm not in the flesh, even though I've been quickened, raised together with Christ, but you see, as long as I still have this body, this part of me that has not experienced regeneration, that has not experienced uh, complete redemption, I will always have to choose either to say yes to it or no to it. And being filled with the flesh means you say no continually to the flesh, and you say yes constantly, always continually to the spirit. And it is only by saying yes continually that you can have life and peace. So you see, you wonder why Christians, depressed, sad like uh, the unbelievers, and we just go through the same misery of sin that the unbelievers go through. But that is what Christ came to redeem us from, to save us from. What is the problem? It is because we are living just like them, as though we don't have the spirit. Alright? We just limit the spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you just dwell here. When Christ come, then uh, you, you, you could lift me up to, to join Christ in heaven. But that is it. Many of us right from that day, we never allow the spirit to, to, to interfere with anything in our life. We don't even consult it. We live our life as though the spirit of God is not in us. So we have the spirit, the spirit does not have us. He has no say in uh, what we do with our money, what we do with our time. He has no say in how, how we live our life. There is no way you can live a, a, a victorious Christian life like that. It is impossible. I'm going to stop here because of time. Next week we're going to continue. So it is important for us to understand that uh, getting filled with the spirit, being filled with the spirit, is not what God does for us. Are uh, you listening to what I'm talking about? Because God has come to dwell in us by his spirit. It is us now that need to actively, continually yield to God. And that is what it means. We need to let the spirit increase. We must not just be pleased with having the spirit and dwell in our belly alone. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? The spirit must take hold of our mind and our thinking. The spirit must rule the way we think. The spirit must rule the way we judge. Our value must come under the control of the spirit. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It is, we must not just live our life and do whatever we want as we used to before Christ came to live in all. We are new creations in Christ now. Our body now is the temple of God. God's spirit now dwells in all and you know what? Before you do anything you consult with the spirit. It must be what the spirit wants. And what does the spirit want? What Christ has taught us. What the early disciple has taught us. It is clearly written in the word of God. 
Are you listening to what I'm talking? Take for instance, uh, uh, as Pastor was uh, teaching us on Sunday, you want to marry, you are a Christian, a uh, uh, lady, a Christian, and then you're asking uh, God, Lord, shall I marry that man? And you know it clearly that that man is not saved, is not born again. All right? Are you listening to me? You already know what the Spirit wants, because the Spirit already said in the world, do not be what unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. The Bible says, let her marry in the Lord. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Many of us, that's exactly what we do. We have read, we have read, clearly written, clearly stated what Christ wants us to do, and then we are still praying and asking the Lord to lead us. That's not yielding to the Spirit. Yielding to the Spirit is obeying the teaching of Christ. Do you understand what I'm, I wanted to rise to your feet? We're going to continue next week, alright? So, letting the Spirit guide you, direct you. Letting the Spirit lead you, following the leading of the Spirit. Letting the Spirit energize you, animate you, motivate you. Habitually seeking the Spirit, being responsive to His guidance. That is what it means to be filled with the Spirit. And do you know what? Uh, uh, next week we're going to learn how to be filled with the Spirit. But what am I saying to you? It is not up to God if I'm filled with the Spirit or not. It is up to me. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Because the Spirit is willing to fill us. If you give more room to the Holy Spirit in your life, you don't need to ask Him to fill it. He's just going to take over. That is what He has been waiting for. If you have the Spirit to lead you, He's going to lead you. All this way He has been leading you, you are the one that is not paying attention. It is time for all. That's the way we can live a life that is, the unbeliever will say, there is something really missing in my life. I may have more money than you. I may be driving a bigger car, but I see something that you have that I don't have. The peace, the joy, the long suffering, the patience, the kindness, the fruit of the spirit, the expression of the spirit. And that cannot manifest in my life if I don't yield to the spirit. Are you paying attention to what I'm talking about? If I don't submit, surrender to the spirit, nobody's going to see that. The spirit will just be locked up with me. Maybe once I come in the church and once in a while I speak and I pray in tongues, that's all. That's all people will know about you, about the spirit. But there's much more than that. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? We read about the fruits of the spirit. When the spirit of God fills you, when the spirit takes uh, 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 control, when the influence of the spirit, the dominion, the government of the spirit increase in your life. Listen, people want to stay around you. People want to stay with you. Do you know why? Because you'll be exhibiting, you'll be exuding the grace of the spirit, the glory of the spirit, the beauty, the love, the joy, the peace. And that's what being a Christian is all about. I just wanted to pray. You are not asking for more of the Spirit. You have all the Holy Spirit that you will ever need. Let the Holy Spirit have more of you. You are going to ask the Holy Spirit, have more of me. I give you more. My mind, my will. I yield it. I put it down. Ask the Holy Spirit, your choice, my choice is now. Now I'm not just going to choose whatever I want. You're going to be involved in all choices in my decision. I want you to pray, say, Holy Spirit, I want, I, I yield, I give more of myself to you. Your influence will increase in my life. Your control will increase. Your dominion will increase. Your reign will increase in my mind. In the name of Jesus, I bring my mind, my soul, my emotions under your control. In the name of Jesus, let the Spirit have more of you. Let the Spirit have more of you. That is what the Spirit wants. That's what the Spirit wants. That is the way you can live a supernatural life. That is the way you can live the life that God has designed for you as a Christian. By the Spirit having more of you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus that Lord we bring ourselves to you. We know you dwell in our heart, Father. But Lord, we want you to influence our mind. We want you to influence our will. We want you to rule our will. We want you to govern our decision. We want you to be involved in the choices that we make, Father. And so we yield more of ourselves to you. Asking Holy Spirit. That as we yield more, you will lead us even more to yield more to you, Father. The Lord continuously, constantly, Father, we will yield more. Unlike the yearly disciple, we'll be filled more and more continually by your spirit. Your spirit will rule, dominate, control us. And Lord, making our life blessing to all those around us. Thank you, Father. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, 
Visit our website today at www.eraldsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.